But some of the other guys that are exciting, the Baltimore Orioles. Yes. The Baltimore Orioles. These kids are amazing. And they have such a good young core. You look all around. You, you've got Gunner. You've got Adley Rushman. You've got Jackson Holiday, who is the not – Hasn't been great this year, but, you know, he's the number one prospect in baseball for a reason. He'll turn it around, hopefully. Uh, I highly doubt he's going to be Todd Van Poppel. But I was thinking, with that young core, what do they need to be a perennial World Series contender? And I've come up with the answer, actually. And I don't think anybody really has thought about it or mentioned it. What about the Orioles, who have a brand new owner, who is a billionaire... Yes. Takes Juan Soto away from the Yankees. Ooh. So I, I love it. And here's the thing. They have the money. The next year, I think they only have... I'm going to throw this out there. I might be totally wrong. I don't think I'm that crazy. I think they only have $35 million or something on the books next year. It, it's something absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, you got some guys you're going to have to pay. And, and uh, Kowser, Rud- Rushman, Henderson... You know, um, they got to figure out what they're going to do with Santander, Holiday, you know, all these other prospects and stuff, all the pitching prospects. Where are you going to put them? It doesn't matter. Right, I mean, yeah, S- put Santander, them right. Santander right now, let's, let's think about this. Santander is out there. He, had th- he has 38 home runs. Yeah. He is batting 236, 38 home runs, 522 slugging. He's he is doing an incredible job. Solo's an upgrade. And so does Young. He's going to be right there at the same age as these guys, which is still crazy. But I, I, I like it. I love it. Do you really think they would do it? I don't know if Soto would be willing to do it, but, you know, money talks. If they're going to offer him, you know, the biggest deal, and granted, in order to do that, they're going to have to do better than the Yankees. They're going to have to do better than the Mets. But if they really, if that ownership group really wants to put a stamp on, hey, this is my team now, and we're going to be great for the next decade, it's very easy to do when you have that much young talent that's all under contract. You make the big purchase. I think it can happen. I think it can, too. And that's the thing about it is, I mean, don't get me wrong. Here's here's a couple of issues. You got curse that too. You got Mayo. You obviously, Jackson. You got a lot of these kids. You're gonna figure some stuff out. I think curse that is a. I believe he is a right fielder. So you got to kind of figure that stuff out. But again, if I can get if I can get Soto, I'm going to get him right now. From a left field standpoint, I'm trying to look at this. They don't even have a left fielder standpoint. Well, that's interesting. Well, think about this, though. Even if they have to move Santander or they have to move Kerstad, you're going to get a good amount for that guy because they're still young and they're under control. And what are you going to need then? You're going to need pitching. Now, we don't know if they're going to be able to keep Burns. So you have to bring in a pitcher. And I have an answer for that, too, by the way. Yes, because Burns will be a free agent as well. But you're going to have Radish, Eflin. You're going to have a Grayson Rodriguez. You're going to have Kramer, Irvin. But who do you think from a pitching standpoint? You're going to hate this idea? No, don't do it. You're going to hate it so much. Stupid. Don't do it. Don't do it. You have have, have too many young, impressionable players and too many good vibes going. Listen, I, I go to Bauer and I tell him this. You are on a zero tolerance policy. No. Just listen. Bauer outage, your logo, see you later. We're not going to see it anywhere. Your your podcast, gone. Adios. Talking to the media, unless we tell you to talk to them, see you later. You're playing for the league minimum. You want to prove to us that you are reformed and you desperately want to play baseball for the league minimum? Those are my conditions. And I know that you're worried about that clubhouse. I get it. But at the end of the day, this is America. You should get a second chance. If he's really telling us the truth that he's a changed man, prove it. Get rid of all of that crap, all the baggage that nobody wants to deal with and tell them I will play for nothing, which is the med- uh, league minimum. And the minute I screw up, if you if you say jump and I don't say how high, get rid of me. Because if oh. they, they need an ace, if they can get if they can retain uh, Corbin Burns and then they can bring in Bauer and they got Soto, they're a World Series caliber team, not just next year, but for the next three or four years, potentially. Well, here's the thing about it. Let's not forget about this. They are World Series calendar like contender, super power contender right now. There's no doubt about it, and they're going to be like, they're going to be that for the next four years, regardless. Now, there's a big difference between being a World Series contender and being a front runner who should win the World Series, right? And there's a big difference between being the Astros 
and being the Brewers and, and stuff. The Brewers have a great team. The Orioles have a great team. Orioles haven't accomplished anything yet. Now the Astros have. You know, the, the Braves, World Series, like, super contender every single year. This year, obviously, down a little bit. The Phillies, super contender. There's a difference between just being a contender and being good and being really good and then being great. Um, yes. the, the Orioles have shown that they're really good. They haven't shown that they're great yet. Now they're playing great baseball. They're they're playing incredible baseball. First place, second place, first place, second place in, in, in the AL all the time. You know, best record in baseball right there, you know, type of stuff. But you got to show it in the playoffs. And, you know, last year being out quick, that's one thing. It's your first year. Now you got that under your belt. They're going to go further this year. Now you bring in a guy like Soto. You bring in a guy, you bring back a guy like Burns or another starting pitcher, right? You go out there and, and make a move in the offseason. I think the thing is they go make a move for a school in the offseason or you go out and make a move for Crochet or or somebody that's a, the next level. You're going to own, own them for a while and they've got the players to be able to do it. That's where you make the difference. I do think as a starting pitching staff, they need another solid veteran. That's why they brought in Eflin. And, and unfortunately right now he's hurt, right? And that's why they brought in Burns. That's why they make that move. But you need more than just the Burns. And all the starting pitching in in these great teams have shown that. You need more than just like that one dude. You need at least two nowadays. At least two. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do agree with you on that. I don't think Bauer's worth it. I don't think Bauer's worth it. And I, I don't I don't see him at the age he's going to be being out of baseball for two years. I think he'd stat wise he'd be just fine. But I think there's other pitchers available that they need. I, I mean, heck, at this point, just bring back Burns. Okay, but if you have Burns, who else are you gonna bring in? Give me a top tier starting pitcher that's gonna be available that you can bring in for a reasonable price. Fred, you're gonna you're gonna be pretty good. Max Fried. Max Fried would be an excellent addition. I'm with you on that. Now, none of these guys are value wise are going to be the same as, say, uh, I mean, like cost wise, they're going to be in a different bracket than a Bauer. Bauer's going to be for free, basically. Yeah. Right. Bauer will play for anything at, at this point. But from a value standpoint, I mean, Blake Snell's going to be available. I mean, he's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Robbie Ray might be available. There's going to be some guys that are available that don't give you those headaches, give you different headaches. <laughs> but not those headaches. All right. I, I mean, I'd love to see Blake Snell. I think he's going to be a lot of money. He proved this year that he can pitch very well. Um, <laughs> I don't want Marcus Stroman, obviously. I definitely don't want that guy. I'm just looking to get an ace cheap, and I just don't know who's out there. I mean, Max Fried was a really good call on that. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Um, I mean, here's the thing, too, is like, here's some other names. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Verlander. Scherzer. Cole might be available. Snell, Patrick Corbin, um, Robbie Ray, Charlie Morton, Giolito as an opt out, Evaldi as a vesting option. I mean, I would go into like uh, Montas. Um, I can't Walker, trust any Walker, of those guys, though. Burns, Freed, Manaya. Again, it, I, and I get that what you're saying is very true. Bieber. Bieber's healthy. We'll be we'll be healthy, right? Quintana. Quintana would be a good number three. Severino. Kikuchi. Mel Kelly, uh, it's a club. It's a club option at seven million. They're definitely taking that. Are you willing to give Verlander thirty plus million? Because that's what it's going to take to keep him from retiring potentially. I'm giving Walker. I would be willing to give Walker Bueller twenty five. Okay, but I don't know if Walker Bueller will take twenty five. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know either. And and again, you're getting down into this list of of guys. It's a little thin this year with some of these players. It's a little thin. I mean, it's heavy on some names up top, mm -hmm. but then gets a little, I mean, it's a little thin on like, there's not a guy outside of like, I mean, again, Cole, who knows if, if there's an opt out at 36 million. That's, I mean, I don't know if he's going to take that. Blake Snell has a player option at, at $38 million, right? Right. Like there's certain things here that, that are going to happen. But outside of that, it gets a lot of number two and threes pretty quick. And you got the Verlander Scherzer, but again, I don't know if I'm going to invest if I'm the Orioles, I don't know if I'm going to invest that money into a Verlander. But if I did, like it's spending $35 million and you're not going to have to sign him for two, three years. You know, I know your personal views towards Trevor Bauer, but I want to know your honest to God opinion, what your heart tells you. Next year, the Orioles are one pitcher away and you have the option between Trevor Bauer at zero money or Max Scherzer at $35 million. What's the better play? Bauer would be a better pitcher. 
I still don't think it's worth it, man. In a day and age of 2025, we're dealing with what we deal with every single day in in marketing and management of your fans. Too much of a headache. I'm good. I know the Orioles fans. They desperately want to win. They they really don't give a rat's ass. If they can beat the Yankees and the Red Sox and Bauer is is a you know canoe, I don't think they care. I think they will. That's the thing that's stopping them. And again, one thing we have to say this is, yes, one of the accusers has fallen off and, and is, is crazy psycho, like should be in jail type of thing. There are other accusers and they have not ever been doubted. Like but Trevor we're... never hasn't Trevor's never said a single word about the other accusers. Forget about all that, though. No, forget I can't about that. forget about that. You can't forget about all that because that's why he's not getting signed. Right. And because I understand. long before he ever got signed with the Dodgers, they were they had problems with um, with the uh, with other women. And this happened while he's with the Dodgers. So there's other issues coming up. And that's again, like that's what's stopping you. If that wasn't there, I would say, hell, yeah, sign the douche. I'd say just because you're a douchebag doesn't mean you can't win baseball games. Be a, be a douchebag and sign them. That's fine because teammates tend to actually like the guy sometimes. Sometimes. Sign them. But that's all there. And I and at the end of the day, I would take my chances with Grayson Rodriguez. I'd take my chances with their entire pitching staff that they already have than I would with Trevor because there's no point in taking these guys. You, at the end of the day, you still have um, – Okay, you're going to have Suarez, Kramer, Cole Irvin. You're going to have Bradish, Eflin, uh, John Means will, will be back if he if he's healthy and stuff. And Grayson Rodriguez, Tyler Wells. I'm taking those guys. And I'm going to bat versus somebody who already has so many issues and half the league already doesn't like him. And half of baseball, half of fans don't like him. And if you've ever been on Twitter and you're not a douchebag, you don't like him.